أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا مولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأصحاب جمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله All praise belongs to Allah for granting us yet another opportunity to engage with such an important topic, At-Tib al-Nabawi, prophetic medicine or medicine of the Prophet. Last week we spoke about Sunnah nutrition and all those factors that contribute to well-being is well established within the Sunnah. Today we're speaking about elimination, which is coupled hand in hand with the concept of Sunnah nutrition. So what is elimination? Elimination refers to the expulsion of harmful waste from the body, also known as detoxification. And if we look in the development of Tiba Nabui, we, we, we recall that in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, there were many forms of medicine. The Greek system of medicine was adopted by the Arabs. And the Greek system is known as Yunani. During the Prophet's life, due to the Quran and his ahadith, we find the development of prophetic medicine by the likes of Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyyah, Jalaluddin al Suyuti, famous authors of this works. And we find throughout the golden era, the concept of, of prophetic medicine grew under the umbrella of Yunani Tib medicine. So within the concept of prophetic medicine, there are six lifestyle factors that are recommended for us to follow. If we manage these six lifestyle factors efficiently, we will be able to promote good health. If we are unaware of the role that these six lifestyle factors play on our life, it could be detrimental. So if you look at the deen, we see that everything, if you look at the, the sharia, the purpose of the sharia is, is twofold to accrue benefit to the individual and to repel harm. So the entire deen is about cleansing. We find that we make dua, we make tawbah to rid ourselves of, of sin. When we wash, wudu, ghusl, it's to rid the body of waste, of dirt. The salah, every salah wipes out the sins of the previous salah. The month of fasting wipes out the sins for the entire year. Hajj cleanses our lives. So the entire deen is about elimination. If you look in the Prophet Sunnah, we'll see it's well documented on the special attention he played to his physical hygiene. Also a form of elimination, cleansing the body of bad odors, of dirt. The Prophet loved the miswak, the use of oils. We find the science of aromatherapy was well established in the Prophet's time. We find that the Sahaba were strong individuals and exercise was promoted. We find they were good horse riders, wrestlers, swimmers. And we find that the Prophet ﷺ constantly busied himself in holistic elimination. So he read his life of harm in terms of the physical body, of what he ate. He taught the Sahaba to cleanse their wealth. So the concept of cleansing and elimination and detoxification is in line with our, our belief system. Within the Prophet of Sunnah, as we recall in, in Sunnah nutrition, everything he ate had a concept of cleansing attached to it. We know the Prophet of said that the best drinks would be water. So water cleanses the body. We find that pomegranate, black seed, the spices, roughage, the use of honey, milk, dates, all of it has a cleansing effect on the digestive tract, meaning it facilitates good bowel movements. It rid the body of waste. So the model of Medina, the people of Medina followed a lifestyle of cleansing. Therefore we say in today's time when the body is attacked by so many contributing factors to stress, the air that we breathe, what we hear, what we feel, what we eat, it is very important for us to adopt the lifestyle of the Sunnah. Tiba Nabawi is a system of medicine designed for all times. As we know, the ayah of the Quran say, says, وَمَا يَنْتِكُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيُ يُوحَىٰ 
The Prophet Sallallahu when he spoke and he gave advice, he did not speak on his own accord, except that he was inspired by Allah. Ibn Qayyim al Jawziya says that Tiba Nabwi has a divine element to it. He also says that Tiba Nabwi, the prophetic medicine, is not a medicine for everyone. Just like the Quran does not guide everyone. The Quran guides those people searching for the truth. However, when people look towards the Quran and they approach the Quran with a mischievous, devious heart, Allah says, Fi qulubihim maradu fazadahumullahu marada. That Allah increases them in their sickness. So those that approach the Quran in a devious way, the Quran will take them further away from guidance. But those people that approach the Qur'an with open hearts and searching for the truth, they are guided. So Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyah draws this analogy with Tiba Nabawi. He says that Tiba Nabawi are only for those believers with pure hearts, meaning we seeking to be pure. And we trusting in the words of the Prophet Sallallahu and then Tiba Nabawi becomes a reality in our life. So as much as we're talking about the scientific benefits and proof, at the end of the day, it is based on our, our belief system. It is based on Iman. So today we know the, um, the slogan for the modern world is go green, organic living, to keep things clean, to reduce our waste. So elimination, according to the, fa the, the so-called father of medicine, Hippocrates, he says that all living organisms grow at the expense of the environment taking from the environment what they need in the terms of food and oxygen, but also rejecting unwanted waste. So toxins, carbon dioxide, even negative emotion is, is a unwanted waste type of emotion. So our health depends on how effectively we digest our, we digest our environment. Meaning when we take in our food, how well is our digestion? When we breathe, how well is our respiration? When we have contact with each other, how well is our business dealing, our social contact? And when we have a balance between accruing benefit and ridding the harm from us efficiently, we thrive as human beings. We thrive physically, emotionally, and spiritually. We spoke about how important it is to eat the correct food. And to start with, the, with elimination, the best form of elimination is to ensure that what you take in has the least amount of harm. That way you are lessening the burden on the digestive tract, on the body system to get rid of waste. So how does waste build up in the body? Our body has a urinary system, a digestive system, we have sweat glands, we have respiration, all designed to separate what is, good to the, from the, what is good for the body and what is harmful. But what leads to the inability of the body to eliminate efficiently? What causes waste accumulation? It's our diets, overeating, we said in Sunnah Nutrition, a lack of water, because water is the ultimate cleanser, a lack of sleep. The Quran speaks about the day being for livelihood, and the night for sleep, for rest. And when we do not give the body what it needs, harmful substances accumulate at various levels, at the cellular level, at the emotional level, and it can affect, affect you spiritually as well. We find we live in a society where we don't exercise enough. We live in a, a society that's governed by social media. Our entertainment happens uh, on the sofa, watching movies. But moving the body, physical exercise is a form of elimination. So when you walk and the body sweats, through the sweat gland the body loses water, salts and also waste products. We find that the odor that emanates from the body, from the breath, from the sweat glands is indicative of the waste accumulation in the body. So if the odor is very harsh, it indicates that the body needs a detox program. What is very significant is that the Sahaba would narrate that the Prophet's sweat smelled like musk. And this is very amazing. 
in that he lived a life of purification and even the waste products that emanated from his body has the sweet smell of musk. We find that we also take in harmful substances. Without a doubt, smoking is one of the most harmful self-induced habits of man. Every breath that we take has been designed to take oxygen to every cell of the body. When we smoke, we are taking poison to every cell of the body. Also, don't be fooled that um, the hookah pipe, the oka pipe, or the something that's associated, some people think is Islamic, and they find with it that, you know, the children buy it, and it's sweet smelling, and it smells like fruit, and people puff away in gatherings, and they look down on cigarettes, but the oka pipe is fine because it's connected to Islam. It's not true. In actual fact, studies have been done to show that the oka pipe is more harmful than cigarettes. Why? Because with every drag that you pull, it's being filtered through water, so the harshness of that smoke is being um, decreased, so you, you pull in more smoke into the body. Also, some of those tobacco has more tar in it, nicotine, than cigarettes. But without a doubt, both is harmful. So the, the lungs has been designed to breathe fresh air. So understand that a big cause of our toxic accumulation is smoking. Second air smoking is just as bad. So definitely we should work towards curbing the habit. Our emotions, we go through different types of emotions day and night. We, some people explode with anger, some grieve deeply. Our emotions is also a form of elimination. If we don't express how we feel, we suppress it. And it can manifest at the cellular level. For instance, in Tewa Nabui, anger is an emotion of heat. If it's suppressed, it damages the internal organs. Therefore, you see when someone becomes angry, the heat starts to rise. It can be seen on the skin. The face is flushed. The capillaries are prominent in the eyes. The person starts to, to become aggressive and stand up. And within Tiba Nabwe, the Prophet's also recommendation is that when any of you become angry, perform hudu. Because anger is from the fire. And cool it down with water, the Prophet also said. Also, what's very significant, the Prophet also said, that if you are standing, sit down. Why? Because anger is a fire type of emotion that causes you to rise and to aggress, to go forward. But if you can follow the advice of the Prophet also, at that time, sitting down does a lot for that state. To go further, the Prophet said, lay down. If you're lying down, you are fighting against that body's need or that fire, you cool down the heat in the belly. Waste accumulation also happens when we do not relieve ourselves properly. And we find it's a, it's a, it's a problem in our society. It's a topic that people, they embarrassed to speak about. But in Tibo Nabawi, there's volumes written on how important it is to eliminate correctly. In actual fact, we know from the Sunnah there is a dua. We thank Allah for giving us the ability to rid our bellies of harm. So one of the duas from the Sunnah is to thank Allah for getting rid of waste. So within Tiba Nabu, in natural medicine, incorrect bowel habits is seen as one of the major contributors to all illness conditions. Based on the Hadith of Prophet Sallallahu based on the on the Islamic medicine philosophy that every illness begins in the belly, we find that modern research shows that when we do not relieve ourselves efficiently, correctly, there's a buildup of waste within the belly, within the intestines, that causes a film to form that prevents that part from absorbing nutrients correctly. So we find that in our society, many people would suppress the urge to go. And it's a big problem because if you suppress the urge to go, too often the body becomes sluggish until you come to a stage where the body doesn't naturally relieve itself the way it should. So when people go to public places, they wouldn't want to go to the public toilets because it's not in a good state. However, it would be worse for you to walk around with waste in the body that has to be released. So when it comes to that option of how the public toilet looks, 
think about this, better out than in. So it's more harmful that the waste is inside your body. So, you know, do what you have to do, take your wipes with a newspaper and cover the area. But understand that that body's urge to relieve itself means that the body recognizes that once it has absorbed all the nutrients from the food, the food is recognized as a poison because it's a waste. So think about the fire. You, you have a fire and there's energy and it's keeping you warm, but there's ash at the end. So that's the likelihood of food in the body. And if that ash, that me metabolic waste byproducts is not relieved or released, it harbors bacteria, microbes, it makes you sluggish, fatigued, unproductive, it can affect your emotions. Other contributions to toxic buildup would also be the amount of medication we take. We live in an era whereby we live on medication. So by no means am I saying if you have a string of chronic condition that you should stop your medication. I'm saying practice preventative medicine as far as you can and limit your intake. However, when your physician advises you, follow the, admission, the physician's advice. But also remember that chronic medication does come with a whole array of side effects, some of which leads to constipation. So the medication has a benefit, but the adverse effect is causing constipation, which means the body cannot release the harms of that medication. So very important to ensure that if you're on chronic medication, ensure that your, your bowel habits are, are regular and ease. So to, to give a description of what's the ideal bowel movement, when you feel need to go, and you go to the, to the toilet, within one minute, it should be relieved with ease from the body. And if it's not like that, it means that it's not ideal. If you are straining, it means that you need to supplement your diet with some sort of fiber, with water, fruits and veg, and there's remedies like olive oil, senna leaves. There's various types of laxative depending on the, the level of the constipation. Another form of waste accumulation in the body also would be connected to our senses. So what we hear, noise pollution. We live in a time where our senses are bombarded with information from all directions. So we become desensitized. And scientists in the field of behavioral medicine and environmental medicine has noted that our environments, depending on the noise level, contributes to our stress. So whether we know it or not, we are not designed to listen to loud sounds from all directions. So in industry, in traffic, loud music, watching movies for hours, it creates a stress on the body. So the recommendations from researchers is that every day ensure that you have at least one to two hours alone by yourself in a quiet environment. They go further and they say, if you can have an hour to two alone on a day-to-day -day basis and meditate, in other words, reflect, and we find that our deen is based on this concept, on tahajjud, to make tadabbur and to make adhkar. And Allah guides us towards reflection. The Prophet ﷺ often would leave the community and go to the, the cave of Hira to isolate himself. And individuals that are able to do that every day, they give some time. In our context, it will be our time for ibadah, for reflection. We find those individuals are able to deal with the stresses of day-to-day -day living. What we breathe, the chemicals we come in contact with. We find that in our homes we have very toxic chemicals that we use every day to clean our surfaces, um, the bleaches that we use. and We use all of these substances without protection, taking it for granted that if it, if it doesn't feel harmful now, it's fine. But inhaling fumes, um, for instance, painters. We find painters at a young age, they begin painting, 
and they don't cover their faces with masks. And over years, they breathe in the toxic solvents from the paint, whether it be lead or mercury. And over time, it affects their health. It leads to lung conditions. It leads to joint pain. So understand that whatever work you do, somehow that work impacts on your health. So you have to find what are the risks in your environment. And you have to address those risks. And by doing that, you practice in Tiba Naboi. Because constantly, we find the Prophet also used to advise with what benefits the community. What's very amazing is that the concept of quarantine to isolate sick individuals from the healthy individuals was established in Islam. During the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life, he would prohibit people that had a certain plague from visiting another community. And he would prohibit people from one community to visit a community where there's plagues or outbreaks of disease. And this concept was only introduced into Western medicine at the early 1900s. So the concept about protecting yourself from harm, external harm, is important for us. So Tiba Nabwi teaches us to be sensitive to the body, to respect the body. Just like we are taught that what we hear, what we listen to, what we think about, affects our soul, the concept of good and bad deeds. Likewise, the body is just as sensitive. So daily, we are confronted with things, and we should put the necessary things into place. So if you are an employer, and your workers are painting, ensure that you get them masks. Ensure that they have breaks in between. Ensure that the air is well ventilated. Social media. Social media is also the, the age of technology. The information that we get via laptops, TVs, all impacts on our emotions and our well-being negatively when we overuse it. So even looking at a computer screen for too long, the glare of the computer screen, the artificial light in your eyes, studies have shown that those individuals that are on their phones and laptops at night, a major contribution to the insomnia could be the artificial light that causes a decrease in melatonin. Melatonin is the sleep hormone that increases at night to allow you to sleep. And it increases due to the presence of darkness. When you expose your body to artificial light, that level starts to decrease and you're, you're unable to sleep properly. So we find that the body has been designed miraculously in that constantly we have natural form of elimination. As you're sitting here, your body is filtering waste products all the time. We breathe in oxygen, we breathe out carbon dioxide, but we also breathe out bacteria that's sitting in the throat, in the nose, in the lungs. Going to the toilet, sweating is a form of el elimination. The female's menstruation is a form of elimination because the bo body is ridding itself of a lining that it has no need for. So therefore, it's important for females to realize that regular menstruation is important. Therefore, you find when it's not regular, it affects the mood. It affects the entire system. We see the emotions, our dreams are a form of elimination. Within Tibanabu, we find that various ulama commented on how your dreams indicate to the buildup of waste. When there's too much heat in the system, you'll have images of fire, heat, and redness of blood. And different dreams can indicate to an overaccumulation of some bad or harmful substance in the body. We also have natural elimination, coughing, breaking of winds, sneezing. So all of these form of elimination and when, when we feel the need to what they call emesis, vomiting, is also a form of elimination. The tears in the eyes. What's amazing, studies have shown that when we cry, we actually provide inner healing on so many levels. So when we're going through emotional trauma, shedding of tears has a calming effect on the body. And this is very significant because we live in a time where men feel that they cannot cry or they shouldn't cry. But we find the most strongest of Sahaba, when they spoke to Allah on the Musalla, they cried. And in that, there's a, there's a release. 
there's a renewal, there's a cleansing. So what happens when elimination is suppressed? We lead to a condition known as dis-ease or disease. So we find that when there's buildup of mucus in the sinus, if we do not eliminate it properly, it can lead to infection, it can affect the throat. If we do not ensure that we have regular bowel movements, it can be contributing to accumulation of waste products. And when the bowels doesn't eliminate properly, the body reabsorbs the waste into the bloodstream. We find that um, the urinary system is designed to flush the blood, to separate the harmful substance from the blood, manufacture that into urine. So that is also important. So we find that there's several conditions that come about due to incorrect um, elimination through the urinary tract. For instance, if men suppress the urine, we find it can contribute to prostate problems, to kidney stones, to urinary problems, to women. If they suppress it, it can also contribute to UTIs. So when the body wants to release waste, you must also remember it's not only from the food and drink, but it's also the bacteria that's present in the body. Because as we breathe in and we take in food, the body's cleansing and fighting of these bacteria. And the only exit routes would be via the urinary tract, via the digestive system, through the breath and through the pores. So within Islamic medicine, or Tiba Nabwi, there's a different view on signs and symptoms. Signs and symptoms refer to those indicators of disease. So when we're not feeling well, uh, it's marked by certain types of signs and symptoms. So like pain. So often when we experience pain, it's a very distressing type of, of symptom. And we solely want to eradicate the pain. But if you look deeper and we see what is the, the objective of pain. So for instance, you came into the masjid and you, tamped, you, you stepped incorrectly, you twisted your ankle. So there could be damage to the ligaments to the muscle, the tendons. So the pain that's there is preventing you to place all your weight as you were before on that foot in order for that foot to heal. When we resort to painkillers, we mask the pain. So we like, so to say, deaden the nerve. So we don't feel the pain anymore. So we walk as you would normally. So we are walking on an injured part of the body. Whilst doing that, we cause further injury and we cause that the body doesn't heal efficiently and, we can, and it can lead to structural damage. So pain is a protective mechanism. However, there's pain that's also indicative of an underlying condition that has to be attended to. A fever. We find that fever seem to also be a type of disease by many people, but it's actually a symptom. So why does a body spike a fever? If we're expo exposed to the flu, in, um, to influenza, once the virus enters the body, the body recognizes it as a foreign invader. So it spikes a fever to create an environment that's inhabitable or not conducive to the virus. So that virus can thrive in the body's normal temperature. But a fever is there to burn the actual virus. So we find in Tiba Nabui, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi spoke about the fever as something that is beneficial. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says that the fever burns away sins the, the same way fire would cleanse iron. But bear in mind there are fevers that shouldn't be allowed to run its full course. But in Tiba Nabui, there are certain fevers that are allowed to run its course in order to overcome a disease. But by no means should we attempt to run any fevers without medical supervision. So what happens if we buy food that we're not so, so sure about? So we buy the food and we feel, okay, this food, but you're going to have it anyway, you're very hungry. What happens if there's certain bacteria in the food? We find that the tummy becomes rumbly 
and we find we feel that we, um, we, we feel nauseous and we feel we have to eliminate straight away. So the feeling of diarrhea and vomiting, the typical gastro. What's actually happening in the body is the body recognizes that there's, there's invaders in the food, pathogens, bacteria that's multiplying in the body and the body aims to cleanse itself. So the diarrhea is a protective mechanism in order to flush out the waste. However, in Western medicine, medication is given to stop the diarrhea. Within Tiba Nabui, we wouldn't stop the diarrhea. So the typical gastro, it's allowed to run because we, we are facilitating the body's way of elimination. So there's certain herbs given to allow the body to maintain energy and lose as little water as possible. But ultimately, we don't want to stop the diarrhea because if you're stopping it, you're withholding a bug. So what happens to that bug? Where does it go to? So that upset tummy, that feeling of fatigue that you have, is actually something that should be celebrated. It means that your immune system is working very well. But what tends to happen? We moan and complain about the protective mechanism that is saving our bodies. So in Tiba Nabu, we find that the Hakims of the past, when someone had an illness, and it was it manifested in terms of a fever, it was seen as an elimination process. Therefore, we find this whole chapter dedicated to linking up our illnesses to the eradication of sins. So bear in mind, your emotional state and your perception of your illness conditions has the effect on the outcome of that conditions. So when you have a negative perception of your gastro and your flu, you'll find that you add an extra burden on your body's healing systems. So ultimately, <coughs> the, the aim of the body's responses during illness is to bring it back to health. Because once we have that gastro that's two or three days, two days max, the body rid itself of that waste. And then afterwards, most often through Allah's, Allah's rahmah, we become better. I'll just end off with the signs and symptoms of toxic accumulation. So how do you know if the body is not eliminating properly? If you suffer from these signs and symptoms on a regular basis, headaches regularly, the feeling of faintness, dizziness, insomnia, water itching, itchy eyes, blurred vision, sticky eyelids. So whilst the Western medicine would look at this as signs and symptoms of specific disease, Every sign and symptom is linked to the body's inability to eliminate waste, according to Tiba Nabui. And the list goes on. Fatigue, hyperactivity, restlessness, low concentration, mood swings, fear, anxiety, chest pains, nausea, constipation. I'll just introduce the induced form of elimination. So in Tiba Nabui, to induce emes emesis or to promote vomiting in certain conditions is recommended, but not as a continuous thing, a once-off way of eliminating. The use of soreness or hot springs to in in, um, facilitate sweat production, the use of diuresis to facilitate um, ur ur urination, the use of certain herbs to cleanse the body, bitter herbs, fasting. So these topics we will focus on in the following lesson. Massage, the use of exercise and cupping therapy. Through the Sunnah detox, we find the Prophet Sallallahu used to use senna leaves. Figs is an excellent remedy to cleanse the belly. So to start the morning off with ripe, fresh figs from the backyard, and if somewhere in your, in your road there must be a neighbor with a, with a fig tree. And if there isn't, that's a good reason for you to start, to start gardening. But definitely figs is a, one of the best remedies for constipation. We find honey is an excellent cleanser for the belly. Without a doubt, water is the best cleanser. Cupping therapy, fasting. Also, the way we relieve ourselves. What's very amazing is new scientific evidence has shown that squatting to relieve yourself allows the anal sphincter to relax, which facilitate good evacuation. So when we sit, as you would on a chair in, on the western toilet, 
we're actually putting strain on the muscle around the anal region, which makes defecation very difficult. However, squatting allows pressure, gravity, all to facilitate smooth evacuation. So we find the introduction of what they call the squatty potty. I don't know if you saw that now, it's a little stool that you attach to the western toilet to raise the legs, to try to mimic the act of squatting. So this is also if something that should be looked at in terms of helping with elimination. So next week we'll start with fasting. We'll go into the benefits of fasting, the sunnah fasting. There's a lot of interesting conversation that will come about due to fasting. And if time permits, we'll go into cupping as well. So this is the end of the lesson. Um, I'll take the questions, the written questions now. Is it recommended that we eat fruit on an empty tummy? Does it mean that fruit cannot be eaten during the day? Okay, um, fruit is one of the most easily digestible foods known to man. However, we are all different. We have different constitutional types due to what we, we grew up on, all impacts on our digestion. So if fruit is easily digestible, and it should be, then definitely to eat fruit on empty belly is promoted. It's very good. So to start the morning off on fruit salad, for instance, especially when you're fasting to break the fast. If we find that we break our fast with a fruit, with a date, because it's readily absorbed sugar, which is good for the morning, so the, the entire night of sleeping, the energy is lost. It's a good start to the day. So without a doubt, fruit can be eaten on the empty stomach and it can be eaten throughout the day, but it's not the same for everyone. Some people find it very difficult to have fruit too close to a glass of milk, for instance. So uh, the concept is very simple. Listen to your body. How do you feel after you eat this food? If you feel energized and you feel that it promotes good bowel movements and you feel fresh and, and um, pr productive, then it's good for you. If you feel lethargic, if it leads to heartburn, it's telling you something. So we cannot continue with a dalchi that's giving us heartburn. So what happens is we have three dalchis because we love them, and then we have the heartburn tablet. So the heartburn tablet might overcome the bit of heartburn at that moment, but it's leading to other adverse effects later on. Okay, the question is, um, can irritable bowel syndrome be part of arthritis? What natural prophetic medicine can help with irritable bowel syndrome? Irritable bowel syndrome is a, a name given to a condition that has multi-factors. And as time goes on, they add different hypotheses or what they think contributes to it. Definitely the prophetic medicine will assist in irritable bowel syndrome because it addresses all aspects of it. It addresses the digestion, it addresses the emotional factors. There's a big connection between our emotions and our digestive tract. So how we feel affects our digestion, how we feel whilst eating. So in Sunan Nutrition we spoke about the importance of the adab attached to eating habits. So whilst I cannot give certain foods that will assist with it because it has to depend on the patient. So, but be in mind that if you approach a practitioner that practice prophetic medicine or Tibanabui or Yunani Tib for that instance, they will be able to advise accordingly. Okay, the question is, if onions cannot be used the next day whilst it was in the fridge overnight, does that also mean it cannot be mixed with salads and placed in the fridge? Okay, it, it, it doesn't mean that you, if onions are in the fridge, you can't use it. If onions are sliced open, onion is a, an important medicine when it comes to drawing out waste products because it attracts waste to it. So the onion that's left in the fridge will attract anything else that's open. 
and it will absorb into the onion. So if you cover that onion with cling wrap or foil, or cling wrap will be best in a Tupperware, it wouldn't do that. Then the onion will be fine to use. But bear in mind that the onion is left open, attracts the harmful substances from the other foods. So the dates that the Prophet Sallallahu used, basically um, the, famous, the most famous date that he used was the Ajwa date. It was said that it was actually the seeds were sown by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi himself. The dates, um, the dates from the Arabian Peninsula would be dates that we would consider to be very beneficial because the climate is conducive to it. So when it comes to constipation relieving the, the medjool dates, the big fleshy dates has its benefit. Also remember that in the lifespan of the date, the, every stage of the date has a different benefit to the body. So you have the rutab, the, 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 the dried stage, the fleshy, the fleshy stage, the unripe date. So for constipation, for laxative reasons, for energy, for fasting, as a cleanser, um, the most ripe dates would be best. Is it okay to have a laxative like aloe crystals daily? Um, once again, it's person specific. A strong laxative is not good every day. However, there are some individuals that need that in order to eliminate. So often people ask what would be the ideal elimination? We should be eliminating the same amount that we're eating. Just a bit short of it. So if, you, if you're eating three big meals a day, you should be eliminating three times a day. If not, daily. But if you're not relieving yourself within three days, then it's a problem. However, certain body types can handle it. But we also remember that people that suffer from constipation, they have a history of constipation. So they either grew up. And also, um, when it comes to our children, find out from your children, are they going every day? Maybe the, 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 they're, not, they're afraid to ask the teacher. Or some teachers might say, oh, no, you can't go to the toilet now. Or, you know, their personalities, they're too shy. So they develop this habit which travels with them to adulthood. And when it comes to IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, colon problems like diverticulitis, inflammation of the colon, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, you will find in its history this constipation or indigestion or bowel problems. So these signs and symptoms that you feel, you burping a bit too much after a meal, listen to it. Because if that happens for a long time, the body goes into another state because it, it's giving you the reminders. It's giving you the in, in, indicators. So when you suppress that, it manifests in a different way. So constipation in children is very bad, especially in babies, because it means that it normally travels with them. So when, you take your, when you're looking for a good school for your child and you find out about the curriculum and the academic, go visit the toilet. If the toilet's in a good state, it tells you a lot about the school and it tells you a lot about the, the pattern your child will follow. Teach your children from young that when they have to relieve themselves, they should go to the toilet. Ensure that you give them proper training, that you give them tissues in their pockets and teach them from a young age so that, and inquire from them. So remember, the earlier you can perfect or improve elimination, the habit will be established till old age. And we find that the people that are most healthy would be those that have the best bowel movements because their body can eliminate efficiently. Well, the question, the second question to the one about the laxative is that if you use a laxative too often, will the body become lazy? Yes, the body will become lazy. So try to rely on foods for its laxative qualities. However, when you need the laxative, then take the laxative. But once again, this I cannot just give generally because there are certain people that will have different tolerances. That's the last question for tonight. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.